All right, we've got to get to your recovery. All right, stretching, useful or not useful? For what? For jiu-jitsu. Useful. And all forms of stretching for jiu-jitsu, stretching all body parts. It's, stretching's useful for performance, not useful, uh, partially useful for injury prevention. Why do you Depending. say partially? Uh, because it can be worse and it can be better. Like the more range a joint has, the less stable it is. Right. So like if something moves a lot, it's harder to keep it, the structure of it tight. Does that make sense? Yeah, like hypermobility, right? Sort of. Not even just hypermobility. Yeah, I mean, just more mobility, right? Um, uh, just think of like your shoulder, you know, like does a whole, like your shoulder moves outwards, forwards, it rotates. It does, it's like one of the most mobile joints in the body. Also much more prone than other joints to dislocating because of that. Because like, how do you have a structure that moves so much, but is also stable? If you wanted it really stable, it would like, be locked in, right? And then it can't move much. You want it to be able to move a lot, it's got to be a loose That's why structure. bodybuilders can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, like uh, but, yeah. Um, so in a lot of sport, or a lot of the time people say like getting more flexible or having more range of motion can be a, a liability for injury. Um, but at the same time, you might like, you know, having flexible hips and hamstrings will mean your back has to bend less if you're getting stacked. You know, like you think about, you know, if you would have seen people that hurt their neck getting stacked, those real stiff people, and they've gotten stacked, and it's like they yeah. get their neck jams up before anything else touches the mat. Like, obviously that doesn't happen to me really because I I fold pretty well. Obviously, like something else could injure, but like for my neck, that's um, good. So like it can be good. I think a problem is that like you get more flexible and then you you start using it. You're like, oh, okay, I'm flexible, so I'll put my cells in these spots, which can be good for performance sometimes, but it is probably not good to be sitting there getting balled up and squashed over and over again. Yeah, that, yeah, I don't know how your back survives that, eh? Um, I just, yeah, I try not to do it under load. I try to do it on my own. I feel like I get flexibility from playing guard retention with people that are shit at passing that. You know, I just sure. let them stretch my legs out. Yeah. Feels like resistance stretching. Yeah. So stretching for that. So stretching is yes or no. Yeah. Well, when you go on Instagram and you see crazy people, because obviously jujitsu people recommend all the wildest shit, like doing yoga every day and stuff. Like it's the fitness industry. The fitness, yeah. 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 But we overlap with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. But you don't do any lifting either. So no lifting, how often do you stretch? Well, I don't really stretch anymore. So you got, so once you achieve the flexibility, you don't need to stretch anymore. I mean, only because I'm not really competing. So I, like I'm, I was doing it for performance. Um, now I can't be bothered. <laughs> but, you, but your flexibility stays. I get, yeah, it stays for the most part, as long as you're using it. Uh, strength training actually does, um, like strengthening is probably one thing that's been shown to reduce the risk of injury. But I also think, like you can make a broad statement like that or you can look at it a bit more, you know, like you can take a lens to that. Like I'm, I feel pretty strong, especially isometrically. Like I think people, like I'm pretty good at not letting my joints suddenly get like put into bad spots, which is like what having more strength means you're, you're going to be better at just like when required, you can, you know, activate the muscles required to just keep the joint stable and not let it, get injured I feel like I've got that already I'm naturally pretty pretty big so I don't need to do for, for injury prevention I don't really feel the need to do strength training but for, for a more lean person it's probably a good idea you definitely see like some like skinny people that get injured a lot in Jiu Jitsu oh yeah for sure yeah <clears throat> for sure and then you're a big cold plunge guy <laughs> no, definitely not no <laughs> Is all right, so I feel like we have to deal with all these weird people suggesting things to you in Jiu Jitsu because of the Joe Rogan podcast, you know, like yeah, recovery, like sauna, cold plunge. He's trying to make it so Joe Rogan never asks me to get on, yeah. <laughs> no, I just mean that's what you don't think the, he's gonna ask me to get on. You go into the gym every day, that's what they're, <laughs> they're talking about, you know, all those sort of 
out the gate sort of recovery. Yeah, but people like, like you know, people want there to be things that you know, like it's not a maybe it's not a nice thing to just spend, like I think people you know like if you just go like oh yeah like I'm just slowly aging and it's not you know apart from just keeping generally healthy, doing strength training and like keeping fit and eating a you know balanced diet. Um, you know, which is probably, I think a lot of these people that promote those things don't do the, the main things, which is that. But um, yeah, so people just want there to be some secret, you know, stem cells, oh, I'm never going to get arthritis now. Or um, Stem cells, oh, bullshit. He's saying that's the set. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think the technology is quite there yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. One day. One day. Maybe, maybe you got the, the good stuff. The good right? stuff. Maybe you got the stuff that's right on the cutting edge that hasn't been proven yet, but. It's, I remember because yeah. I got, I remember from some dodgy doctor in Melbourne, he gave me PRP. PRP, yeah, and I remember being like, like from just him blindly injecting randomly into my not body. even with ultrasound or no, 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 just like <laughs> just like I'm the, getting the right spot, a yeah. needle this fucking big, and I was like, my shoulder feels way worse than it did before that, yeah, because I was like I torn part of my labrum or something. Sure, you tore it actually. <laughs> <laughs> you injured me. But you injured my rib, remember? So, and you probably injured me more than I've injured you. No way! You've broken me way too many times. Hey, you've had to get stitches because of you from the same dodgy doctor. You know, he was good at stitches though. But yeah, PRP bullshit, right? I, I haven't looked. To be honest, I'm not like reading up on the latest stuff. But as of about four years ago, yeah, it was bullshit. Maybe there's some new research showing otherwise. But but generally speaking, like if you were to be injured now. Most treatments just re-strengthening the weakened area, like not any crazy out. Like people always tell me all the time, they're like, "Oh, you're crazy. You don't get a massage every week." And I'm like, "A massage? What the fuck's a massage gonna do?" To me? <laughs> Feels good. Yeah, that's yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Basically, pretty much. Yeah. Well, even. I what, mean, it, yeah. What about massage, a, acupuncture? You know, like all that sort of stuff. It's like. I feel like it's things people say to have something interesting to say. Yeah, but people want, you know, they want something to do something to the tissue. Yeah, they want to like a better speed it up. People. But yeah, I mean, you because yeah, we've evolved to be pretty good at healing. The better, but at the... least like pretty good, you know. And then if you just like put the, you know, you've got scar tissue, it's going to come in and kind of glue the the um, injured bits together, and you need to like. You do need to move, like just pure rest is bad for, for most things. Like when you move, the scar tissue like aligns, you know, there's collagen and it has to like align to some degree with the tensile forces that it's gonna, that the normal ligament's gonna, or whatever it is you've injured, is gonna experience. So like that's why doing rehab just basically like solidifies that. And you can also sometimes get the general structure around, like, you know, if you get more stronger muscles around the area, you might be less likely to re do the injury that you did before, but, yeah. Yeah, right, because like I've never, never <clears throat> had any help from any of these things. What are the other machines people give you? Is it If you believe that would help, they might, but that's the thing. Yeah, but how could you yeah. believe it when it's just retarded people telling you to do it, you know, yeah. like? Yeah, ultrasounds, definitely. Actually, ultrasounds got, weirdly got some evidence for like bone healing, but for like ligament healing, no. What, so in terms of, what, what is it that makes certain people be able to operate without ACLs and is that just the, the strength of their surrounding muscle? The ACL is a weird one because it's like within the joint and so it stops your, you know, your knee sits on this, like your thigh bone sits on, on your tibia like this and it can like slide like this. Um, so it is actually something that given good movement and like good strong muscles around it that are like supporting the joint and probably a bit of your you know not everyone not every knee actually looks just like people don't look the same not every knee actually looks the same some might be more likely to still be stable despite the acl being gone um so for, for those people who do rehab they might not need surgery and some people they get it torn and they do all the exercises they want and it's still unstable is it, is it more heading in the direction of people attempting rehab only first now than operate straight away or? It seems to be heading more towards that. I think the recurrence rate, if you do your ACL and you're under 
19 years old, the recurrence rate's very high. Oh, like yeah. 80% or something like that. I can't remember the exact. It's like very likely you're going to do it again. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So like, it's that, but that's probably like a gen, like those people that probably predisposed, like it's happened early because they were just, it was going to happen, you know? Yeah. Uh, whereas if you're 30 and you tear your ACL, you probably move in a way that is generally protective of it and you're just unlucky and you're probably more likely to cope with. But still, uh, you know, do your ACL and you want to keep wrestling and doing like pivoting and stuff, you, it's got to be back to very good function. Oh, really? Cause Nick just like, you can just like play guard and it's a bit easier, but like some of the, some of the higher, like wrestling I think is a lot harder, but you still, you may, maybe for some people it grows back. Yeah, that's crazy. It grows back. Yeah. That's wild. What's wild to me is people can not have an ACL and not know it. But they yeah. could have had a torn and they just, yeah. they never even. It's wild if people, someone will have an injury and they act like they're about to die. Someone else will have the same injury and not know they're actually injured. Yeah. 